We are kicking off this this next news video with an update on Bray Wyatt, as Bray Wyatt is uh, Bray Wyatt missed last uh, I believe Sunday's uh, uh, MSC live event, and a lot was made about the reason why Bray was not there, as Bray was originally advertised for the event. And as of right now, the reason it seems to be that Bray Wyatt has some sort of an illness, according to Fightful Select, and was uh, has been, well, taken, taken off the road for the foreseeable future. It is unclear when Bray Wyatt will come back and the severity of the illness, but it is, according to, again, Fightful Select, an illness... And there is no truth or proof that Bray Wyatt has creative issues with WWE and that having anything to do with why Bray did not show up, like some news outlets are reporting. It is not to say that, that, that there is no proof to that or no truth to it. It is just that right now there is no truth to it. So there is truth to Bray Wyatt not being there and not being there for a reason. It's just that the clarity of why Bray is not there is unclear. At this point, Bobby Lashley did tweet saying something to the effect of that I've been, uh, that I've worked too damn hard to be to miss WrestleMania at this point. And basically, Bobby Lashley will one way or the other find his way onto the WrestleMania card with or without Bray Wyatt. Now we make the move over to WWE and Stacy Keebler is apparently the next name rumored to be announced for the Hall of Fame. According to reports, uh, Ric Flair is said to be on the bump this week and will announce the next inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame. It is like I said, I believe during the recap of SmackDown that WWE does have the tendency to allow a week between the announcements. And, you know, basically as, you know, basically it's a way to allow the fans to see the video on both Raw and SmackDown and then take it from there. And since we've seen the Rey Mysterio video on both Raw and SmackDown, it is very clear that more than likely this week on SmackDown in some form or fashion, we will get another Hall of Fame induction video. But there is also rumors that the Hall of Fame inductee that a member of this year's class could be the great Muda. Even though Muda did not spend any time with the WWE in the past, Muda has a history with uh, WWE properties, those being WCW and Jim Crockett Promotions, as well as Muda also has a history with American promotion, Impact Wrestling, and he made an appearance with AEW in the past as well. So Muda does have history in America, but never within the ranks of WWE. And the fact of the matter is, and the fact of the matter is, Muda is one of many rumored to be in the Hall of Fame. The one question I have is, the one question I have is, if Muda gets inducted into the Hall of Fame, I mean, if with Rey Mysterio going in, this likely means that Dave Batista is not going into the Hall of Fame. And I do wonder if that means Dave will go into the Hall of Fame next year. Because the reality of the situation is, I don't think they need two people like Ray and Dave, Ray and Batista going into the Hall of Fame in the same year. Um, WWE also made the decision to trademark, apparently... As of, I believe it was March 9th, they trademarked, um, they trademarked the Almighty, which has been Bobby Lashley's nickname, Bobby Lashley's nickname, since his association with MVP, I do believe, and Bobby Lashley's name in general, which I'm a little confused by because, I mean, I guess they can trademark his name for entertainment purposes, but it's just odd that they, they don't usually you know, trademark somebody's actual name. Like, 
trademarking Bobby Lashley's name is like trademarking, um, well, it'd be like trademarking Jeff Hardy's name. But they trademark both those names. Again, that does not mean that they will end up with the trademark. It's that right now they trademark the names or issued for the trademark. Now, back to WrestleMania, we got Logan Paul and Seth Rollins are guaranteed to be included in the night one, apparently, according to in the Impulsive podcast, where the announcement was made that Logan Paul and Seth Rollins will be on night one. And also, Seth, uh, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, if there was any doubt, will be the main event of night two. Speaking of main events, though, another rumor has been put out there that the main event of night one could be the women's championship match between uh, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I think it is very possible, in my opinion, that the Usos versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens should be the main event of night one. If that match is the match that they're going with, it should be the main event of night one and not the women's championship match. I understand why they would choose the women's cha- or would could or they could choose the women's championship match. But I think uh Sami Zayn and Finn, uh Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens should main event against the Usos because of the raw emotion and the attachment, the build, the em- the investment, everything involved in that match screams main event of WrestleMania. And, you know, the women's championship match has just been built up since WrestleMania. I mean, Royal Rumble. I'm not saying it's not capable of being the main event, but in a different year, I would say it would be capable of being the main event. This year, I think it is more likely that due to the circumstances, the tag team title match should be the main event. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens against the Usos. Also, speaking of main event, speaking of WrestleMania, Steve Austin was said to be, according to Fightful, Steve Austin was pitched another match for WrestleMania, this one against L.A. Knight, where Steve, uh, Steve Austin, according to reports, last summer was pitched Brock Lesnar <coughs> and turned down the money. Turned it down because of money. He was pitched Roman Reigns and never got back to WWE. Imagine ghosting WWE with the with the prospect of fighting Roman Reigns at WrestleMania in the cards. And also now I don't know how recently it was how recent it was or when it was for that matter, but according to Fightful again, L.A. Knight was the pitched main event for Steve Austin at WrestleMania. Can you imagine that Steve Austin versus LA Knight in a match at WrestleMania? That would be freaking incredible and a great way to up the stock of the man LA Knight. Yeah. I think that would be a perfect way to do it, but also I'm going to just pitch it out there. What about SummerSlam? What about having a match take place at SummerSlam, LA Knight versus Steve Austin, or elevating LA Knight's status over the next year and having him fight Steve Austin at WrestleMania 40? Because in my opinion, you got three weeks before WrestleMania, or a little bit less than three weeks before WrestleMania. Why not start thinking about WrestleMania 40, and if you want so desperately to have Steve Austin and The Rock in a match at WrestleMania 40, what about Austin versus LA Knight at WrestleMania 40? Now we switch over to AEW as all the WWE news is done. The AEW news though is Dave Meltzer is insisting that he know that he may have figured out who will fight Jade Cargill at Dynamite this week and answer her open challenge. According to Dave Meltzer, it is very likely, very possible, very possibly could be the debuting Taya Valkyrie, as Taya is said to be done with Impact Wrestling, and due to her status as a, one of, as a member of 
the Death Dolls in a trio, and they have the Freebird rule going. Technically, her team doesn't need does not need to drop the titles, and they could easily just transfer the just transfer the ranking of uh, the championship over to the duo and make it a duo now instead of a trio. But the fact of the matter is, the main reason is because Taya is supposed to be on a tour and is not on the tour, and that basically. It's insinuating that Taya is going to sign with either WWE or AEW, and because of the circumstances of Taya being from Victoria, Canada, it is, according to Dave Meltzer, evident that Taya Valkyrie will likely be the one that debuts on Dynamite this week to answer the call against Jade Cargill, and I think it is entirely possible that if it is Taya Valkyrie, that Taya Valkyrie could be the first to defeat Jade Cargill for the TBS championship and and give Jade Cargill her first loss in AEW. Also, AEW Rampage last week got the biggest, the, the highest ranking, the ratings among AEW Rampage since January 27th. And it seems like a lot, ha a lot of that has to do with, a lot of that has to do with the women's division. And what they're doing with Ruby Soho, Tony Storm, and Soraya. So I think that the AEW should keep going with what worked. Because apparently, something they did this week on Rampage worked. So they should keep going with that logic. And keep going in that direction. Because Rampage needs its own identity. And if last week is any indication, they may be on the right track. But we also got a breakdown of Raw coming. And news from this week's Raw about Wrestlemania coming in the next video. So it's not just a news video this week or today. It is also a uh, breakdown of Raw. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you in the next video.